Katrina here from Scrappy Horses. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are a subscriber and you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you. I'm happy you came by and I would encourage you to check out the tutorials that came before this one on the lap book journals, puppies and dogs, to sort of get caught up on this project. In this video, I'd like to share some ways that you might want to use your book. I know that a lot of us make these books and then they sit on shelves and we never do anything with them. So I thought it might be helpful for you to see some ways that I like to use my book. So with no further ado, let's jump right in. Here is my first page and I've already sort of laid out uh, how I want to add a picture and a little um, wooden button. All of this that you see that's in here now I had already done before when I made the book. So I bring in some ink and a sponge. I'm using some Twilight close to my heart. I'm sure it's retired at this point. But I'm going around just a little strip of paper. Now all of the paper that you see in this project is from polka doodles. Uh, a lot of it's from Horace and Boo, as well as Work and Play Twelve. Now you see I'm finishing this up and now I'm going to take these two pieces off to the sewing machine. At the sewing machine I am going to just put it in a zigzag stitch as you can see there and then I'm going to bring in some masking tape and I'm going to take this tape and cut it into small little pieces to lay over the stitching on the back side. This will keep the threads from pulling out. Now if you don't do much sewing you might not realize that when we sew fabric we can back stitch and that will lock the threads in place. However on paper we really can't do that so we either need to take the threads and knot them together or a much quicker and simpler way to do this is just to lay some tape over the back and that should keep your stitching in place. Obviously when we glue this little piece of cardstock down that's going to give us another layer of stickiness that will also help keep that down. Here I'm just going over the edge of my picture with a little bit of that twilight. Be careful when you do this because sometimes um, it doesn't dry quickly on your photo and it will smear. So you might want to wipe any excess off with a tissue or a piece of paper towel or just leave it for a while to dry. So now I'm laying this in to see how it's going to look on my page. And I'm just sort of um, adding now the tape, which is double-sided tape, to my little wooden button, as well as the back of the photo and the back of the cardstock that we just sewed together. Now here you can see me wiping off that glass plate just to be sure that all of that ink is gone before I lay my photo face down. Sometimes when you're inking, especially with a sponge, little particles from the sponge will come off as you're flipping it over the cardstock or a photo and you can barely see them but boy when you smear something into it you can really see it on your project. So it's good to keep a piece of paper towel close by or a tissue or something to just kind of check your surface every so often. Now I've adhered the little cardstock to the uh, photo of Luther. Uh, this particular picture was when we first brought him home on the very first day he was home and I believe this picture was of him just kind of laying down under the table. He was so little. He's not little anymore. Now I'm here getting ready to adhere the button so I'm sticking a little double-sided tape to the back of this wooden button. Um, the wooden button I believe is also from close to my heart. Again it, it's been in my stash for a long time so I'm sure it's long retired by now. Now for me this is the fun part but also the part that takes the longest and that's when I try to choose some more embellishments to put on my page and figure out exactly how I want to lay out all the pages. I decided here I wanted to use some burlap and place that in. However it still looked a little empty to me so I found this little brown flower in my stash and a little um, dark turquoise sort of to match the color up there in Puppy Love and Unconditional. 
decided that might be a fun embellishment to add. Even though Luther is a boy dog, a male, I decided it's okay. We can put some flowers in his book and we can put some pink in his book. He doesn't care. I checked it out with him. He was fine with it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some fabric tack and um, just sort of smear that over the places where I put the double-sided tape. In case you've not seen my videos before, I use fabric tack over the tape. It gives me some slide room. That way, if I get something not exactly where I want it, I can slide it around a little bit. That double stick tape has a lot of grab, and when you put something down with just the tape, it usually grabs pretty quickly. However, if you put some tape, or I'm sorry, if you put some glue over the tape, you'll find that you've got a little time. You can sort of move it around just a little bit. Here you'll see I'm pulling that thread down so that it hangs down and not sticks up over the words. And I like threads hanging down. Some people do not. And um, for example, if I were selling this book and somebody cut all the threads away, I would be fine with that. I just think it's kind of fun to have the threads hanging there. Now I've put this burlap in and I've glued it under the photo and now I'm gonna next glue in this little flower. I will tell you that that double-sided tape is a little tough to get off those, uh, those soft paper flowers. It's probably made out of some kind of mulberry paper or something, but if you work at it carefully it you can make it work. It will The liner of the tape will come off and you can get it on there. So we are finishing up page one and still there's room uh, if I want to add something else in there I certainly can uh, but at this point I'm calling it finished. Now that's the little uh, folder over on the left and over on the right is our actual second page of the book. Again I've already chosen my photo for it and everything that you see on the page right now was on there before. That's how I made the book to begin with. Again, if you want to see that, you can refer back to um, the lap book journal videos, and I'll put those in the description box below so you can find those. Now, this is a little note card, or index card, rather, and the little march, I just did that on my Cricut um, you know, doing a, not a print and cut, but a write and cut. And I just simply typed in March, you know, and then just put it on that shape. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some raspberry ink to match the color that's in these polka doodles papers. And I'm going to run it around the actual March. And I'm also going to run it around the index card. To share with you at this point too that I have the video going now at twice the speed that it was before. I speed up the video because I know you all know how to sponge around things to add color to the outsides of die cuts and uh, paper pieces and photos so we don't need to do that in real time or slow motion. Oh definitely not slow-mo. Here I am just wiping up the uh, glass plate again just because again I was sponging ink and I don't want to get that on my photo or on the back of that index card. You'll notice later in the video that the back of that index card has lines on it so that I can add journaling and I will add journaling to the back of it and you'll see that uh, later in the video. I'm cutting some double-sided tape uh, to add the little march to the top of the index card so that it can stick off the top. And again, that's just a little strip of double-sided tape. A little bit of um, fabric tack. And again, I do that so that I can slide it around, get it exactly where I want it. Now, the next thing you're gonna see me do is I'm taking a little strip of this paper. Now, it might be a little difficult to see, but this paper has little paw prints on it. And I thought, I want to cut a strip of that and use it as if it were washi tape. So what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping it around to make it look like a little strip of washi tape to sort of decorate and hide the seam of where I put the march on top of the card. 
You might wonder why I was cutting my tape into thinner strips and not just using a thinner double-sided tape. Well, the reason is, is I'm about to run out of my really thin double-sided tape and I have this wider double-sided tape, so it works the same way. Sometimes it works out to be cheaper to buy the wider tape and cut it into narrow strips. Just depends on whether or not you find a deal and uh, what the prices are. So that's just a thought for you. So here now I've got my thin tape out. Since I knew I wanted to do a long strip of it, I just used a nice long strip of the uh, thin tape. So I'm taking off the tape backing and I'm just gonna wrap that around, matching it up carefully so that it meets on the other side. I'm just lining it up to meet with the very top of that card. And now that little card's going to be ready to add some journaling about bringing home our puppy because that is going on the adoption page. So that is done and ready to roll now. Now it's time to get Luther's picture glued into place. Again, since I was working with that piece that had ink on it, I wanted to wipe things up. I just showed the back of it and you could see the uh, lines there. Now, this is a little tuck spot that I made that I can tuck that little index card and the little march sticks out so that I can pull that out. And here's where the little puppy picture is going. This picture was actually taken on the ride home. And um, the writing that's going to go on the index card is about when we went to pick him out. We didn't realize that the day we chose him would be the day we would bring him home. So that was kind of a surprise for us. I did not put tape over the um, sides there. You can see I'm sliding my finger under there. That way, if I decide I want to add a little bit of lace or burlap or I want to stick something else in there, I certainly can do that. And here I'm going to do that. I decided I wanted to go with a little bit of this pink burlap. Uh, it's really stiff burlap. And I decided I wanted to use that because it was going to match the left side where I decided to put some in on the folder to the left. Here I'm just adding a date to this little piece that is from Little Miss Sugar Pops, also from Polka Doodles. Now I can take this card and I can stick it back into the spot where I had it before and I can pull that out at any time and read that. It's time to move on to decorating the back of the folder. Now I'm taking a little piece of that same burlap that I had already chosen for this page and I'm deciding where I want to put that with my picture of my little grand girl there who met Luther the first or second day that he was home. And then I also have another little baby picture of Luther that I'm going to put on the back of that folder also. So again, um, I'll be adhering these in the same way. I will be using double-sided tape and a little bit of glue, possibly. I'm not sure if I actually used uh, double-sided tape on the back of the photo or not. But here I am using the glue to put on this little piece of burlap. Next, I'm just going to tape or glue the photo in right over it. Oh, I'm just using glue. I couldn't remember if, how I had done. I always do voiceovers because I run the air conditioner when I'm actually crafting, and you would never hear a word I said with the air conditioner going, well, that in the 70s rock pop. Okay, so anyway, let's move on. Um, this is the little piece of twine that I actually pulled off of that burlap, and I'm using it now as a piece of twine to tie through the buttonholes. I never throw anything away. You should see my crafting space. It's, it's a disaster because I never throw anything away. But there's always there are just always so many goodies on my desk to choose from when I'm doing this kind of project. Now I'm going to come in with Luther, this picture, and um, He's going to go above this picture of my little grand girl here, putting it in at an angle. 
and Luther will actually go in straight. I kind of toyed with the idea of putting him at an angle, but I think if I remember right, he went in just straight and squared up with this little piece of ribbon. This little piece of ribbon has on it today, be happy, love, life. This little card that I'm gluing in right now, remember, also from Polka Doodles, the Little Miss Sugar Pops. There are lots of fun pieces for journals in that collection. I, If you enjoy journaling or calendars, record keeping, you need to check that one out. Little Miss Sugar Pops, Polka Doodles, very good collection for that. All right, so I'm just using a little bit of glue. I'm not even worrying about the tape for these because I'm just gluing on single layers here. And that fabric tack is pretty sticky. It's pretty good hold. And if you don't have a lot of layers, I think it's just fine. And here comes my little button. Now this is not a metal button. It's a, a more plastic type. And the fabric tack holds it quite well. Um, if I were using metal, I might actually use something a little stronger, like an E6000. Now you might think that I've gotten my video out of order, but no, this is the way my brain works. I decided, you know what, I could put a little itty bitty picture of Luther on the front of that index card and then it wouldn't be blank. So I went over to the computer, printed a little picture and added Luther's sleeping picture because everybody has to have a picture of their baby sleeping, right? I added that, I inked around the edges of this little strip to go behind it just to add a little decor, used a little fabric tack, and stuck the picture on top just to add a little more um, interest. Now, I was having trouble lining it up and I couldn't figure out if it was exactly right. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna pull up my uh, measured craft mat here and all I'm gonna do is just line up the picture on one line and line up that little strip on another line. I wasn't too far off, but I can never tell if it's straight or not. So it's just always easier for me to do it that way. I'm finally happy with how I have put that little piece on the back and now I'm going to adhere it to the front of the index card. Just put a little fabric tack along around it and stick it on. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be sticking anything else on there so I didn't have to worry about leaving the edges free or anything. Since I'm going to be sticking it inside of there um, I didn't want to add too many embellishments anyway. So that area though is big enough that I could add some more pictures under there or anything else I wanted to add. So there it is. It is finished. So here we go. We're going to take a little tour now. Oh, going to stick in the date. And I didn't even glue that in. I just stuck it in under all the other goodies. So there's the first page with Luther with his little food dish and everything. And the folder page and then the adopt me page. So now we have a few pages done. And I hope I've inspired you to make a lap book and then use the lap book to actually document some of your adventures and journeys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, all of the links to the lap book, how to make the foundation and how to make the pages will be in the information box below. And if you'd like to subscribe, I would love to have you join us on my YouTube channel. Thanks for coming by and I'll see you in the next video.